Well, we're ready to put uh, colour into clothing and book. However, I'm not happy with this section here. This collar uh, is not as it should be. So before we start painting, I think we have to start sandpapering. Well, there we are, uh, sandpapering off some uh, sections that just won't work. Blow them up away and get started again. Just sketch it in with a, a yellow ochre and water. Let that dry and then add a bit of black and egg and retrace those steps. Now we're going to be blocking in the collar and the gown and the cap or the bonnet and for the fur collar and uh, cuffs using uh, um, raw sienna and for the gown it is black but rather than using Mars black using raw sienna and mixing that with would you believe it ultramarine blue and when you get to a certain level with it you come up with a nice black rather than a dead black then for the highlights something I've not done before because usually as you'll know if you've watched any of these videos uh, know that uh, we make highlights by adding titanium white but this time I'm not going to add titanium white, I'm going to add unbleached titanium which behaves in much the same way but it's, it's a pale yellow without much chroma and we'll see how that works. Well while that's all going on let's hear about why we're learning about John Calvin. Why are we painting an icon of a reformer of the church who doesn't really come within the Orthodox or the Roman Catholic sphere of uh, uh, holy people, let alone saints, uh, but is certainly an important uh, person within the Reform tradition. And that's why I'm painting him, because I'm from the Reform tradition. So Judy Fisher writes of John Calvin, or Jean Covin, in May 2009, the 500th anniversary of the birth of the French reformer John Calvin will be acknowledged in Geneva and around the world. Calvin helped consolidate the Reformation movement. He was second generation to Martin Luther's initial protest against Catholic indulgences in 1517. John Knox of Scotland, that is 1514 to 1572, was another contemporary Calvin was educated for the Catholic priesthood at the University of Paris and Law at Orléans. Calvin's influence as a Reformed theologian was significant in Europe during his years in Geneva. His theology particularly emphasised two central themes, salvation by grace alone and the kingdom of God. His Institutes of Christian Religion, first written in Latin in 1536, following his break with Catholicism, are still regarded as a clear authority in some Protestant churches today. In his many confessional documents and other writings, Calvin tried to meld together gospel and practical Christian living. For Calvin, the Bible was the focal point of church life. All members were to be lifelong students of the scriptures, which should be read with a view to finding Christ in them. He wanted to inject inject conviction and the presence of the Holy Spirit into liturgy and divine worship. Calvin believed that while the Lord's Supper should be central to each worship service, its mystery required protection for prof profaning sinners. This godly discipline led to a tightened access to Holy Communion within the Genevan Church. 
Calvin also attempted to transform the civil society of his time. He and other reformed leaders who lived in Geneva cooperated with the town council to define the civil codes of the day. Some historians have pointed to this period between the mid-1550s and Calvin's death as one of moral austerity and political control. Calvin remains controversial. For some, the principal concern is with the emphasis of Calvin's successes on an expanded doctrine of predestination, which led to a fear of hell. Other ad adherents have seen material prosperity as a sign of God's blessing and its recipients as predestined for salvation. Later, Max Weber named Calvin the father of capitalism. To mark Calvin's anniversary in 2009, the General Secretary of the World Alliance of Reformed Churches, Dr. Setri uh, Naomi, reminded the world uh, members, churches, Presbyterian, Congregational, Reformed and Uniting or United, of their origins in the 16th century. Protestant Reformation, Dr. Naomi, invites us to reflect on three themes from Calvin's life and ministry. First, Calvin professed a strong call to compassion and social justice. This may have been ingrained in him through his flight from persecution or from his ministry with expelled French refugees in Geneva. He believed that where God is taken seriously, humanity is cared for as well. Second, Calvin wrestled with the question of whether and how the law of God revealed in the Bible was to be obeyed in the political and social order. For him, reconciliation involved justice in society and the rejection of war between nations as a means to serve the gospel. Calvin believed that we must live together in a family of brothers and sisters which Christ has founded with his blood. To Calvin, this family included barbarians and Moors, an unpopular view in his day. Third, despite the realities of the period of the Reformation, Calvin was committed to visible unity through the one Lord and the one Church. He was willing to mediate matters of division to minimise scandalous schisms. Historically, however, Reformed Churches do not have a good record on visible unity, and commitment to ecumenism is often undermined by internal division. For Calvin, such circumstances were a poor witness to the gospel and in, inhibited the church's mission in the world as well as the lives of its members. Visible unity remains a challenge for churches to demonstrate the one body of Christ. Well, certainly an interesting and at times controversial character. We uh, often talk about being Calvinistic as being uh, austere. You know, some would say that it was the later uh, Calvinists who were uh, more austere or more rigorous in their uh, understanding of uh, predestination and that Calvin perhaps was not a Calvinist. <laughs> now here we can see the beginnings of highlights on this interesting black created with raw sienna and ultramarine blue and have added to that this uh, unbleached titanium a pigment I discovered a couple of years ago which I find really handy for particularly for backgrounds and things like that and using for the first time in highlight and I'd have to say I'd first thought that I'd use it for the highlight in the brown colour, in, the, uh, in the, the, the fur collar and cuff. But then almost inadvertently found myself putting it into the black. I thought, no, I'll keep going with this. I did try, I did another test piece using white instead of the unbleached um, titanium. And the unbleached titanium, I thought, was a better result. It has mm, a bit of a bit of colour to it. It doesn't flatten out the highlight. 
but here I'm using the unbleached titanium in highlight and, and covering quite a lot of what I had originally covered just with the raw uh, sienna. Now for all of this I'm using um, the number three brush. Now just to recap something of what I was uh, doing while I was reading about the life and theology of John Calvin, the book the uh, cover of the book is painted with red ochre and the pages painted with yellow oxide. Uh, there are three yellows that are pretty much the same hue, that is the same colour yellow. And they, they differ in their uh, opacity so that golden ochre, which I habitually use for flesh tones, is uh, the most translucent. Then yellow ochre, which I habitually use for sketching, uh, partly because it can be uh, easily removed and also it's very cheap. And then the most, uh, the strongest, the most uh, opaque or the least translucent of those yellow colours is yellow oxide. So yellow oxide is what I used for those pages because I really wanted to cover up anything else that was underneath. I didn't want uh, some of my uh, stray paintings, particularly say of the collar, to show through. I wanted to have the uh, yellow really cover it over. Here I have been progressively adding. Now here's an interesting experiment. I'm using a, the um, hog hair brush and dipping it in just dry, it's, it's wet and then dipping it in dry uh, burnt umber and stippling to get, try to get something of the fur effect on the collar. Did it work? Well, we'll see. Well, here's John Calvin uh, with his clothes on and holding a book that's blocked out. There's still some work to do on the book. And there's halo and inscription to do and background. So we'll see how that works out in the next episode. Thank you for watching.